Hello, my name is Rohan Paul and very welcome to my computer vision and deep learning YouTube channel. Let's get started. In this video, I will talk about weight decay in PyTorch while building a neural network. So uh, first the definitions. So weight decay is a regularization technique by adding a small penalty, usually the L2 norm of the weights uh, to the loss function. And that's the formula we see at the top that is loss the resulting loss will be equal to loss plus weight decay parameter multiplied by l2 norm of the weights and this is a mathematical representation of the same formula that is loss equal to error that is a uh, original loss plus these l2 norm of the weights which is uh, uh, which is expressed as a lambda which is a constant and hyperparameter multiplied by all the weights to its squared so that was a loss and then uh, for the formula for updating the weights themselves this is what we use uh, under weight decay that is weight at uh, at t plus one equal to weight at t that is the previous weight minus learning rate into gradient of weight minus weight decay into the original weight and this weight decay is the decay factor which is the same as lambda in this expression and it is an hyperparameter which uh, needs to be tuned and uh, given a proper value for the best result now let's just uh, concentrate on this expression which is uh, the same as the top one that is loss equal to error plus the uh, l2 norm of the weights multiplied by uh, multiplied by the decay factor lambda so uh, le let's break down these L2 uh, regularization. So we have our loss function. Now we add the sum of the squared norms from our weight matrices and multiply these by a constant denoted by lambda. This lambda here is called the regularization parameter and this is another hyperparameter that uh, we will have to choose properly. And uh, if we set this lambda to be relatively large number then it would incentivize the model to set the weight close to zero because the objective of a stochastic gradient descent algorithm is to minimize the loss function and remember our original loss function is now loss plus this whole amount so lesser this amount will be my loss also will be less and that's the whole purpose of SGD algorithm and to make that less the algorithm will try to make this expression low as well and so if we have uh, already choose uh, already have chosen a high lambda then the algorithm will choose a very low weights so that this whole expression become low and that's when uh, the algorithm will be incentivized to make these weights as close to zero as possible and why do we use weight decay at all uh, mainly two points that is to prevent overfitting and the second is to keep the weight small and avoid exploding gradients because the l2 norm of the weights are added to the loss and each iteration of your network will try to optimize or minimize the model weights in addition to the loss this will help keep the weights as small as possible preventing the weights to grow out of control and thus avoid exploding gradient and how do I use weight decay in PyTorch? Simple. It's already been implemented in the torch.optim. Um, uh, torch.optim module. So uh, we have SGD and Adam here uh, for this example. And you just need to when you when you define optimizer uh, that is using torch.optim.sgd or torch.optim.adam, there is a parameter called weight decay, and that is some value that you have to decide. Uh, I mean, you have to give uh, because it's a hyperparameter. So so uh, here, for example, I have given 1e-4 for both SGD and Adam, and that's all you have to do in PyTorch to, um, to apply weight decay. Now when you apply your weight decay to your optimizer like this, by default it applies the weight decay factor to all the weights in the network and also all the bias terms in the network. And here lies an important fact that some people think that weight decay factor should not be applicable on the bias terms because these parameters are less likely to overfit. Also, many people think that the decay should also not be applied to parameters with the shape of one, meaning the parameter is a vector and not a matrix, which is quite often the case for normalization modules like batch norm, layer norm or weight norm. 
Hence, to solve this problem, we have a way indeed. Uh, because now PyTorch, uh, PyTorch provides a way to get the named parameters from a network. So we can get a name along with the parameter value uh, for your neural network. And for standard layers, bias is normally unnamed uh, as bias. That is, uh, each bias layer will have the uh, string bias appended to it at the last. And so combined with the shape, we can create two parameter list, one with weight decay and uh, another parameter list which does not have an weight decay and then apply our weight decay factor accordingly. Let's, uh, let's quickly check out an example of that, what I mean. So uh, I just want to check that how to get the parameter names with the help of named parameters and then I can uh, I can build a function to uh, apply weight decay based on those named parameters what we just discussed. So I am just pasting some basic boilerplate code here uh, with torch, torch vision. I have my model defined as models.resnet pretrend equal to false and I'm just printing uh, the uh, it will be my model dot named parameter so i'm just printing these named parameters and let's see what does it gives me uh all right yes it just gave me all these names of my my model which is a resnet 50 with pretend false so as you can see that i have all these names very properly defined so all my bias terms will have a bias string at the end of it uh so conv one dot weight bn one dot weight layer one zero conv one dot weight similarly so i can clearly see that all these bias terms i can definitely get from these names uh, from the list of names so now uh, that's what i'm going to do uh, there will be a single function uh, to uh, to uh, apply the weight decay factor based on uh, these names so some some names or uh, that is some some parameters in my uh, in my neural network will not be applicable for weight decay factor and some others will so let's do that so coming through some of the pytorch related forums and github i got one function and i modified it very slightly uh, and here is this function custom weight decay so all this function will do is add the weight decay or not based on the names of the parameters but before understanding this function just quickly check out uh, documentation in uh, pytorch official documentation what they are talking about power parameter options so the, in this here the documentation mentions that how you can control uh, uh, various things on a power parameter basis in an in a while implementing optim.sgd or for that matter any optimizer so what it says is optimizers also support specifying power parameter options to do this instead of passing an iterable of variables pass in an iterable of dict uh, each of them will define a separate parameter group and should contain a params key containing a list of parameters belonging to it other keys should match the keyword arguments accepted by the optimizers and will be used as optimization options for this group so uh, this this is the dict that this is here talking about uh, so i have to have a params key and um, the other uh, the other keyword argument uh, should be um, should be matched what uh, the optimizers can take uh, for example here uh, for optim.sgd uh, for the params i can pass model.base.parameters that means uh, the model's base parameter will use the default learning rate of 1e minus 2 but uh, here for the second line i'm uh, i'm capturing model dot classifier dot parameters and passing a learning rate of 1 minus 1e minus 3 uh, meaning that the uh, model dot classifiers parameter will use a learning rate of 1e minus 3 and a momentum of 0 0.9 uh, which will be used for all parameters all right now with this uh, let's uh, check out this function so all this function is doing now uh, first uh, it uh, it is just um, uh, having two lists uh, decay and no decay uh, which will hold all the parameters that will have decay applied and no decay applied and then i am just looping through the net dot parameters and net is my argument so if not params dot requires grad continue that is this is the frozen weights and otherwise if lane dot param shapes equal to equal to one so this is my main condition based on which i will not apply 
uh, the weight decay factor to those parameters so uh, if len params dot shape equal to equal to one which that means it's a it's a vector and not a matrix or names dot ends with bias that will capture all my bias terms in the network and also any other name that i can pass as uh, part of this argument skip list then if this condition is satisfied i will add all these uh, all these to my no decay dot append so no decay list will hold all these parameters otherwise the rest of the parameters will be held in the decay and then i'm just returning a uh, dict format of list uh, because remember the documentation said i have to pass a dict so that and that will sh that should have a params key so that's why i'm having a params key here to that i'm passing no decay weight decay zero uh, that means all these no decay params will have a weight decay of zero and otherwise other decay params will have a no weight decay of l2 value and l2 value is again is just a hyperparameter that you can uh, decide upon and then to apply this uh, function it's just simple just um, uh, invoke this function pass it uh, to as an argument pass it your uh, whatever neural whatever network you are building and um, the uh, the learning value uh, sorry l2 value is a is just number that you have to decide here for example i'm choosing 2e minus 5 and then in uh, so then this param can be uh, can be applied to my optimizer like this that is torch.optim.sgd that will take the params and that will have my this output of this custom weight decay function and the learning rate will remain whatever you decide to choose so this example was about uh, disabling the weight decay factor for some layers so let's name it accordingly this cell so this cell just um, did that and next i am going to check that um, how exactly uh, my uh, weight decay factor actually works so i need to see some evidence that the weights are reducing uh, when i am applying weight decay so let's do a very simple and quick example and i got a very simple piece of code from pytorch forum uh, showing ex exactly how the weights uh, will be smaller uh, when i invoke the weights decay to my network and this is that code so uh, let's check out this code i don't need uh, my imports are already there at the top i don't need that so i'm just uh, creating uh, some numpy array uh, as random weights and then creating a torch.tensor from those numpy array so that i can just pass this to uh, to an actual network uh, an optimizer so uh, x torch and weights torch are those random weights and then uh i am creating an optimizer sgd optimizer here in this line torch.optim.sgd uh, to that i'm passing this weights torch that has been randomly created uh lr is my lr that has been defined earlier and um, y torch will be just the matrix multiplic uh, matrix multiplication between my x dot x torch and weights torch that is the x values and the weights of them and loss i'm defining to be uh, y uh, torch dot sum and then uh, the standard zero grad backward and step uh, to do a uh, to do a gradient uh, th that is a back propagation and uh, that is uh, this step will actually update the weight so that i can see the uh, see the effect of uh, using my weights uh, decay so first uh, i am printing here in uh, uh, the original weights actually this line should go here so there are three sections of this code the first i'm just printing the original weights as it is and then i'm doing this little uh, sgd optimizer passing the weight decay to be equal to zero and then the same code uh, like this but here i am using weight decay equal to one so here i'm taking the same weights torch uh, which is torch.tensor weights dot weights np requires grad equal to two true here and uh, uh, then uh, creating the optimizer y torch again torch dot matmul matrix multiplication loss and everything else remains same and now i'm again printing uh, one weight decay uh, is uh, uh, that is my that that will be my weight torch so what i want to see ideally is that when i use weight decay is equal to zero uh, 
then I get a set of weight values and that will be slightly larger than when I'm using weight decay equal to one. That means when I am actually bringing in weights decay factor, my weights will be uh, reduced uh, compared to their previous values. So let's just run this code and see the output. All right, this is my original weight tensor. This is my zero weight decay tensor. Uh, this is after resetting and weight decay tensor, one weight decay tensor is here. So just compare this tensor with a zero weight decay tensor. So as you can clearly see, uh, whatever values we got for our zero weight decay tensor, that is reduced in the one weight decay tensor. Because here uh, for this result, the weight decay factor has been, uh, has been applied on all the weights. Uh, but here, because there was zero weight decay factor, no weight decay factor was applied. Uh, all right, so that was uh, that's that's exactly what uh, what was expected for uh, to be seen in this case. Meaning that's exactly what's the what's one of the motivation of bringing in weight decay to a neural network that uh, it keeps a weight small and avoid exploding gradient. Uh, what we discussed. Uh, uh, earlier that um, uh, why do we use weight decay at all to prevent overfitting and also to keep the weight small and avoid exploding gradient because the L2 norm of the weights are added to the loss that is here L2 norms this is the L2 norm of the weights so now my uh, SGD algorithm will reduce this whole loss and to do that it will reduce the weights because so when I give a lambda to it because the whole purpose of SGD algorithm to, to reduce the whole right side expression and now that I have these weights, by reducing them, I will reduce my loss. And uh, in thereby, I will uh, uh, the whole neural network will uh, avoid exploding gradient. And that pretty much wraps up this video. And over the coming days, I will do many such videos on common techniques and tips of PyTorch while doing deep learning projects. So do subscribe and smash the like button. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.